Welcome to the Mitchell Tech SCADA channel. This video will show you how to connect and program a variable frequency drive to run a motor taking commands from a PLC. The PLC shown in this video is an Allen Bradley Micrologix 1100, and the VFD is a PowerFlex 525. By the end of this video, you will learn ways to interact remotely with a VFD. First, wiring and programming start stop commands, and second, wiring and programming to handle drive faults. Before going further, I will outline the rest of this discussion. First, I will show you the terminal layouts and wiring diagrams necessary to understand signal exchange between the PLC's discrete I.O. and the VFD's discrete I.O., then discuss VFD parameters for this particular setup. Second, I will show you the program running in my PLC. Thirdly and last, I will demonstrate the entire system running with the ability to remotely start the VFD, detect a fault, and clear the fault. Starting with terminal layouts and wiring, we'll first discuss the major points to land on the VFD terminals. PowerFlex 525s have two rows of terminals under their protective cover, whose logical layout corresponds with this image. The first terminals to note in this setup will be the ones I've highlighted with the blue enclosures. In numerical order, they are terminals 02, 08, and 14 on the right side of the diagram, and terminals R1, R2, R5, and R6 on the left. Anyone setting up a VFD should also note that terminal 01 always requires positive voltage to enable the VFD to run. In the training equipment at my disposal, Terminal 1 and many other terminals are in use for other projects, so I can't show the simplest possible configuration. But just know that you can get the VFD to run from PLC commands by simply wiring Terminal 1 directly to Terminal 11. Next, we'll discuss wiring to PLC input terminals. For input wiring, I've highlighted the only inputs you need to pay attention to with colored boxes. The signal coming from the VFD for fault present goes to my input I0-7 highlighted in dark red. The only other input to note is the motor running status, highlighted in green. The motor running status signal goes to my input I0-8. Next we'll look at the PLC output wiring. With my PLC program, the run VFD command runs from output O0-0, landing on VFD terminal 02. This is highlighted in dark red. The clear VFD fault command runs from output O0-5, landing on VFD terminal 08. The last wiring diagram to study shows the VFD terminals. Any technician wishing to run a motor from a VFD must connect terminals R and S to an AC power source, only two phases though. A ground wire must connect the front panel terminal for ground with system ground, and as a default, terminals S1 and S2 must observe high DC voltage as part of a safety circuit. Voltage here will typically be uh, plus 24 VDC. Naturally, power must also run from the VFD to the motor with terminals U, V, and W, and the motor must connect to the power side terminal for ground. Besides the wire landings discussed in the previous two sections, installers must take care to bring in proper reference signals to several more terminals. The VFD must be able to compare input references to a common low voltage signal with the PLC, so I connect terminal 14 to a DC common point shared with the PLC. Also provide plus 24 volts DC to relay one and two terminals, those are R2 and R5. Now that I've described the proper wiring to remotely start the VFD, stop the VFD, detect faults, and clear faults, I'll let this image sit for a moment, uh, which you can pause if you want to complete wiring before going to the next section. Now we can discuss VFD parameters, which should be brief. The first four parameters shown are appropriate for the MTC lab room motors, but if you are checking in from elsewhere, consult the user manual or labels on your motor to determine these values. The bottom seven parameters reflect a VFD configure to start the motor running when terminal 2 receives positive voltage, but without memory. This means the motor will stop once positive voltage ceases. The parameter to start from a voltage signal at terminal 2 is from parameter P046. Speed control, parameter P047, is set to the default drive potentiometer since speed control by PLC is out of scope for this video. The unique settings for this scenario will be from the T parameters. Parameter T062 is the setting to use two wire logic, meaning the motor will not run when positive voltage ceases for the motor run command. Parameter T068 configures terminal block 8, in this case telling the VFD to clear faults when high. Parameter T076 enables relay 1 contact to convey motor faulted information, and parameter T081 enables relay two contacts to convey motor running information. 
You can pause the video here to continue viewing these parameters while you program the VFD before moving on to view the PLC program. Now we can discuss how to program the PLC to communicate with the VFD remotely. The only line you need to note in this section of the program is highlighted in red. The rungs below that run logic not needed for this tutorial. The rung to pay attention to here, number zero, is fundamentally a seal in memory circuit, but includes one additional piece of logic in the sealing in branch below the start button. In addition to the normal out PLC run memory bit, it includes a bit for VFD faulted. I included this because with my parameters, the VFD requires more operator actions to restore function after a fault if that bit is not included. Without that bit, the operator would have to clear the out PLC run signal with a stop push button or PLC trainer circuit e stop before the VFD will listen to a run command. With the fault condition included in this arrangement, the VFD will be ready to run again as soon as the operator clears the fault and presses start. Because the Relay 1 and Relay 2 commons are both wired to plus 24 VDC in my arrangement, the VFD fault bit shows high when there is no fault and low when there is a fault, consistent with the description of parameter T076 in the PowerFlex 525 user manual. Therefore, to maintain logic continuity when there is no fault present, use an XIC bit for the fault present signal. The next section of code will show how to connect user inputs and the VFD states to outputs. Here, you can see the relevant code again contained in the dark red border. For my control panel, I've decided to use a selector switch right side position as an input mapping directly to the clear fault terminal on the VFD. If there's a VFD fault present, the PLC will turn on a yellow light on my trainer board, and if the VFD shows that it is in a running state, it will map directly to a green light. The previous page of PLC code will also show that when the PLC run command is active, the red light on the board will illuminate. All the planning and building steps are done, and now you'll see the project run. Here I start by pointing out that the two running lights on the PLC board are off, and the VFD speed is zero. Then I press the green start button, showing that the VFD activates using buttons from a separate panel. Immediately, the red and green lights illuminate, showing that the command for the PLC to run is on, and that the VFD puts out a signal confirming that it is running. Then I press the emergency stop button on the VFD board, causing the VFD to stop and show it has a fault. After I point to the two places where the operator can see fault indications, I then point out and operate the panel inputs that I've set up to clear the fault, using the right side position of a three-way selector switch. Once I've cleared the fault, both indications for fault present disappear. Then I show that the normal start and stop functions operate as expected. That concludes instructions and demonstration for how to wire discrete I.O. between a PLC and VFD to remotely start and stop a VFD, detect faults, and clear faults. I hope you found this helpful. Take care.